Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you're joining me moored up just by the poacher's pocket just around the corner from Chirk Bank and this is a special place for me in the canals as that stretch of canal just in the background there which you may or may not be able to see depending on how the light balance in this opening clip is but that's where I used to spend a lot of time on the old paid for winter mooring uh, system back when I had narrowboat tilly and I've probably spent more time moored up on the little stretch of canal in the background here than I have on any other part of the canal in, well, in the network. <laughs> right, let's go and have a look and let's look at some footage from back in the old days because there's some brilliant, fantastic memories from around here. How the old winter mooring system used to work was that you would be able to pay a small fee based on the length of your boat and between the months of November through to the end of March, so it was a five month period, you'd be able to basically say, oh, I want to stop at this location or that location. Or there was something called the general towpath permit, which allowed you to stop for, if you wanted, the five months in certain areas that were just along the towpath with no specific definition other than it couldn't be, say, for example, within a certain distance of a marina. And so there are limitations to it, but something like this, just a random out of the way place, it was an absolutely fantastic little scheme. And it was something that I always, every year I had a uh, winter mooring and then ultimately the system got changed and it went up dramatically in price from one year to the next. The winter, the general towpath permit was discontinued and the only two places, or the two nearest places to this spot for winter mooring were Ellesmere or Langofflin. Right then my friends, I'll have to apologise for this little voiceover section here as there's birds kicking off absolutely unbelievably loudly outside every now and then. But back to the matter in hand, as we zoom in here you can see good old narrowboat Tilly moored up just there on that little spot. And as I've said so many times and will say forevermore, Narrowboat Tilly, although she was a very small, simple, basic narrowboat, what she allowed me to do, and in my mid-twenties to late-twenties, she allowed me to spend so much time out in places like this. And even though it wasn't the easiest life by any stretch of the imagination, I mean, I think this footage here is from about 2014. And again, just being able to live in places like this and have all of these wonderful experiences in my twenties, I'll always love Narrowboat Tilly for that alone. Now this is quite an interesting little clip here. Uh, so basically, as you can see, being a winter mooring, you expect it to not be quite such beautiful blue skies as you saw. And this was one particular day when my granddad was going to drop off a few bags of wood for the fire. And so rather than meet him down at the poacher's pocket and then carry him up the uh, path, instead I paddled down on the kayak and again, this is just the madness really of my old uh, narrowboat life. And then we loaded up a couple of bags of uh, wood, because obviously it's like quite heavy uh, logs and that, onto the front and the back of the kayak. And then I paddled it back up the canal. Again, because it was only a very short trip. You'll see just how short a trip it was, like a two minute walk or so. But just for the novelty of it, I uh, just hopped into the kayak and paddled down. And obviously it made it far easier than trying to carry him by hand. Because instead I was just paddling away as if it was absolutely nothing. Well, because I literally wasn't carrying any weight. Um, now this is another thing that I used to like to do. I used to moor up just around the corner from where we were at the start of this video. Which is just by the 48 hour moorings of the poacher's pocket. Where the canal side pub now known only as the poachers, my apologies. Um, but as you can probably tell, it's literally a two minute walk or so, as I just said about the collecting the wood. And it's one of them, I suppose it's one of the benefits of the old general towpath permit that you could do stuff like this, shuffle up and down these little sections and things and not be, oh right, I'm fixed in this particular spot for five months. If you didn't like your particular spot with the general towpath permit, you could obviously shift along a little bit if you wanted and find somewhere better. Once upon a time, that was an absolutely beautiful tree that overhung the canal. But obviously you can imagine something like that must have some pretty substantial roots going all through the canal bank on that side. So you can understand why it uh, is no longer a beautiful big old tree. 
there's some sort of almost forlorn sort of majesty to it in its current state, but certainly not as nice as it once was. It's a strange thought really that with the old winter mooring system where it used to work, I would pay for my little mooring and spend sometimes maybe three months here, four months here, five months here at this exact spot in any one particular 12 month period and wake up and look out onto this view and have this same sort of surroundings. And it's, it's strange because in my mind and in my memory, I always think of my life on Tilly as one that was in sort of constant flow and very un uh, unsettled and unrooted. And I always remember it as being like all of the cycling in from all sorts of different ridiculously far areas to be traveling back to Oswald Street every week to work. In, in hindsight, at least, that's how it seems. Somehow, in my mind and in my memory, it's, it's this area where I have a lot of my very happy memories and an awful lot of time spent that seems to be the least significant. I don't know if that's maybe because it was the easiest sort of time of the year because I wasn't worrying about moving. I think uh, another thing that cannot be understated is how muddy this towpath gets. You can see how here we've had lovely, beautiful sun for weeks on end here, and it's all dusty and dry and incredibly bumpy. That's another thing. It's fill filled with all these stones and bits of brick and stuff. So again, Coming down here on your bike in the dark was always an adventure, but over the winter months, this would just turn to an unbelievable amount of mud. I think if the fact you've got a slight bank on this side as well only helped to channel more and more water onto it. See what I mean? Well, okay, let's be realistic. That's hardly the most dramatic footage of a bit of mud on the ground that I've ever seen. But please give me a break, my friends. I'm trying to record and find scraps of footage from four to six years ago. Um, but as you've seen in this video, though, let's, let's get back on track. As we walk towards Narrowboat Tilly here, it was an absolutely fantastic place to be able to call home for so much of the year. There's a holiday boat going past as I'm recording right now, so again, apologies for any noise in the background and stuff that you do or don't hear. This is a little bit of footage now just showing a few different weather conditions, some better than others, from being moored up just around the corner from where we just were, just by the poacher's pocket here. And as you can see, I mean, in my mid-twenties, to be able to call this home for half of the year, give or take, it was it was fantastic and I really can't tell you how much I look back and love the memories that I've got from around here even if they do seem sort of almost overshadowed by some of the ludicrous bike rides as I say that I used to do and some of the harder times in different parts of the canal but ultimately as you can see that was just a, a little rainy look at Chirk Tunnel this is Chirk Aqueduct looking beneath the viaduct over the valley um, and of course, I just wanted to throw this little clip in here, just to end this video really. Well, there's a little bit more to talk about after this. But this being a winter mooring, this is where I would obviously be having my uh, Christmas decorations go up. And year on year, my Christmas decorations on Narrowboat Tilly got more and more ridiculous, as you're about to see, until the point, I don't know how many, there was just hundreds and hundreds of lights on the boat. It was a fantastic, again, just a bit of fun, just something nice to do. And people used to walk down the towpath and have all sorts of different comments to say. But ultimately, again, beautiful environment to just get up to a little bit of fun and games like that. I suppose this would be a good time to bring this video to an end as I have a wander around on the roof here. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look back at some very fond memories and some of the good old days on board Narrowboat Tilly in this very special little spot just to, as I say between sort of the lion keys and the poacher's pocket for anyone who knows the area or just down from Chirk Bank and the Chirk Aqueduct for people who may not be familiar but yeah as I say it's been a fantastic fantastic few years and I'm very glad to be back on the canals again especially revisiting places like this in the middle of summer 
ultimately though thank you so much for tuning in check the links in the description to find my short boat life books about my life on board narrowboat tilly there's also a paperback there so kindle versions paperback goodness knows what else you'll find links in the description to me all over the internet as well facebook twitter instagram all that sort of stuff where i basically just post a lot of things that look like what you're seeing on the screen right now anyway thank you so much for joining me friends until the next time of course keep it interesting keep it boat worthy and of course my friends have a fantastic day and farewell